Welcome, City Biz List audience. My name is Carrie Graves, and I am the Executive Director with the National Alliance on Mental Illness, or NAMI Metropolitan Baltimore. And I am so excited to have the privilege of interviewing Angela Celestin today, who I consider to be a transformational leader in human resources. Uh, she is the Chief Human Resources Officer at Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield, and um, is one of our amazing honorees for our event, Louder, uh, this month. So we are so excited to be honoring her, and we're going to be talking a little bit about her efforts in supporting the employees at Care First and her background in human resources and all the new and upcoming tools and techniques she's got for managing mental health in the workplace. And so, Angela, it's so great to have you here today. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. It's, it's really an honor. And I'm looking forward to uh, continuing this partnership. And I'm looking forward to our event this week. Absolutely. Well, let's... Uh, Kick it off with just a little bit of your background. I mean, you've got such an extensive background in human resources across various industries. Um, could you maybe share some insights on how shaping the employee experience contributes to an organization like Care First? Yes, absolutely. So I am responsible for really the working environment here at Care First. I've been responsible for environments like you mentioned across financial services and consumer product goods and, you know, banking. And, you know, one thing I've realized is people are people wherever you go. I, um, I have over 6,000 full-time employees here in the D.C., uh, Maryland, um, Virginia, and West Virginia area here in this region with um, several thousand more contractors. So it's important that my job focuses on the work environment, right? My, my role is about creating a space where all employees can thrive. And that's what I do. Um, that's what I have done for the last 30 plus years is really create an environment where everyone can see themselves, where everyone can make a difference. We call our employer population difference makers. People ask us, why is that? It's because they volunteer their time, their treasures, their efforts, both within the walls of Care First, but also in our communities. Just last year, our different difference makers volunteered over 75,000 hours of their time in improving our communities. And that in impact really translates back into our work environment. So uh, I focus on culture. I focus on uh, making sure people have the right tools and resources that they need to succeed. And I focus on making sure people are really handling their personal as well as their professional development and it's all moving in the right direction. And the two are so intertwined these days that uh, my focus is really on, you know, making sure that employees have the right access to resources wherever they show up. That, that's incredible. And I love the term difference makers. I mean, if we could all think of our employee groups as difference makers rather than just employees, I think that is just a, such an incredible term to be able to use and that whole separating the professional from personal. I mean, so many of us spend more time at work than we do at home, right? So it's impossible to separate the two. Yeah, they're so intertwined. Yeah. So if you, you know, if you are having a bad day at, at work, that could translate to home. If you're having challenges at home, that can be, you know, come into the workplace. So how do we make sure you have the right resources, whatever you're working and whatever you're working on? And that's what, that's what NAMI is about, actually. NAMI, you know, is, uh, is an organization that really tries to eradicate, uh, mental health stigma. And so we also try to do that at Care First. And I think that's why this partnership is so important. Yeah, it's been a it's been an amazing partnership. Um, we've been so proud to to work with you all over at Care First, and excited to honor you with this achievement award. Um, you know, I certainly know what the achievement award means to to us here, but tell me a little bit about um, what the award means to you, and a little more about the work that you've been doing at Care First in terms of um, employee well being. Well. Um... 
what does this award mean? This means that we are getting it right to be recognized by NAMI. It's a journey. So we're, we're not at the end. There is no end state. We continue to improve uh, access to behavioral health and mental health resources for our employees. Uh, an, an example of this is behavioral health training that um, we have rolled out for our employees. Over 500 of them have taken this training to identify when their colleagues need help. Uh, we've partnered with external organizations that create more access to behavioral health resources, like Headway is uh, one resource that we've partnered with that really creates um, kind of on-demand access to behavioral health and mental health providers right, in your community. Uh, we also have online digital resources so that if you need a moment to really step away and speak to someone on your phone, on your app, you can do that as well, uh, just to take a few minutes to express how you're feeling in the moment. And then those are more I would say those are resources that are a little bit more technical. We also, though, encourage things that are a lot more, um, maybe less structured, like taking time off to get up. Many of us are working at home and take a walk during the middle of the day. So we try our best not to schedule meetings between 12 and 1 throughout the day so that our difference makers can actually get up and walk and really um you know, get a little exercise in. Sometimes I will start out a meeting and ask that people stand and stretch and, you know, practice different breathing techniques to get them set for the meeting. And I would say last but not least, so many of our meetings are done on video. And I'll take a few minutes, and this is a practice that not just I do, but we all try to do this. And we open up the meeting with a question that gets everyone talking around the room. It can be a simple question that, like, um, tell me something that made you laugh yesterday. And it gets everyone talking right before we get into that meeting. And what that tells people is we want to hear from everyone in the meeting. We see you. We want to hear from you. And that's a way that we know that um, it, it helps people feel valued in their work day and in their mental, mental health uh, for that day. So, again, receiving this award means that we are on the right track, but we're definitely not at a destination. But I think we're moving in the right direction. I definitely think you're moving in the right direction. And, you know, obviously you are a healthcare and health focused company, but I guess, you know, what made you decide um, or Care First and you decide to prioritize mental health resources and especially stigma reduction in the workplace? I mean, were you seeing an increase of issues with your difference makers? Um, was there, were there concerns being brought forward? Um, what, what made you pick this as a priority? Yeah, so I think that's a great question. We saw a lot of this start during the pandemic when people and um, across our communities were beginning to feel a little bit isolated. I think we all know that um, I was watching something on Netflix. I think it's uh, Blue Zones or Purple Zones, Blue Zones, right? Where people live the longest, right? And how they live the longest. And it, it just reiterated that community and having community around you really helps in your mental health. And so what we found that isolation during the COVID pandemic really did not help our difference makers. It was actually hindering their ability to really be productive at work. And it was really taking a toll on our difference makers. So that was one uh, indication. And we heard that because we did surveys, a lot of surveys during that time, right? You know, what do you need? And some things came up like technical support and, you know, be maybe better access to, to, to the internet. Um, even food insecurity came up. And we know that if you have challenges at home, again, that can spill into your your work and your ability to do your work. So we, we really started to take more of a holistic view at, at, at health as a healthcare business, as a healthcare organization. And me as a head of human resources, I'm also the head of our benefit um, plans and programs. So that is when we really started to say, hey, 
this is something here that we need to focus on. And so we really started to partner. Uh, we can't address these health challenges that people have in the silo. So we, we try to partner more. Uh, we try to connect more in the community. We spent more time externally outside during COVID because that was an opportunity to give back to our communities, but also an opportunity to bring difference makers together as a team, right? When we really weren't going into enclosed an environment. Uh, so I think that was really the thing that sparked our focus. Recently, just last year, we did a benefits equity survey and we asked our uh, employees like what we could do to help make sure that our benefits were equitable across all levels in the organization. So that meant really having these back and forth, real live and some survey questions to say, what can we do differently? And one of the things we heard there too was, you know, sometimes we need a break during the day. Can you, you know, increase our access to um, being able to seek resources around mental health and behavioral health. So that came up in the survey a little bit more than we had expected. So we do know that we still have some work to do to, to make sure those employees that may not have the flexibility to move away from their desk throughout the day can also have resources maybe right at their fingertips while they're servicing our customers. I love that. Um, you mentioned several things there about the resources that you've brought in. And I know you mentioned a couple. You mentioned bringing in NAMI um, and, and some other resources. How did you go about identifying the specific um, resources that you brought in and the programs that were needed for your employees? I mean, I think it's I think it is um, outstanding that as a healthcare organization, that probably could have said, you know, we could just do this ourselves, that you identified other resources to bring in for your employees. So how did you identify those? So we have a great behavioral health department, right? And they are part of our health services uh, division. So we're kind of lucky. Uh, our director of behavioral health, uh, Oleg Tukovsky, he um, is a really huge resource uh, to us. So he um, he becomes a resource even to our employees. When we have a town hall, we may bring him in to do some practice exercises, whether it's, like I said, breathing or taking a moment to reflect um, to help our intern employees. But we also have, um, we've identified, you know, organizations, like I said, NAMI, Headway, Seven Cups. This is through the work of our health services team, really finding what is the best resources for not just our employees, but also our members and our member uh, community. But again, we continue to keep the lines of communication open so that if some of these partnerships are not working, we know to pivot and look for different partners or um, be a little bit more additive and add different things. So again, keeping those lines of communication open, partnering with the experts in this area, and then partnering with our community organizations who do a lot of work in this area, I think has been the, you know, the key to our success. Um, and then educating leaders, I would say, is the last thing, right? Because you can have all the resources in the world, but if your leaders don't have that positive reaction to an employee who may be requesting time off or wanting to talk through a problem that they're having, then it's just, you know, it's a waste of, of resources, right? So we also educate our managers to say, really know what benefits we provide making sure that they are aware of those benefits because you get new employees. We're hiring almost a thousand employees every year, making sure our leaders are aware of the resources we provide, making sure our employees are aware because sometimes you don't want to go to your leader, but you'll go to a peer. And we have what's called employee resource groups. We have nine of them in total where employees really join groups they're like affinity groups that they may have an interest in, but those groups are also ways to kind of create a community and network of friends at work. And they, you'll, you'll be surprised. We have one that's called, um, it's the uh, working parents uh, and caregivers employee resource group. And a lot of times some of these stressors at home are directly related to some of the 
the the additional pressures you have as a caregiver at home. And so you can pull, you know, come to a meeting and you can talk to those pressures and those difference makers, they're sharing, hey, did you know we had this app? Do you know we have this benefit? Did you know that you can use your PTO time off, your paid time off? Uh, to take a, a, a mental health day if you need to. And so it's all of us really knowing what resources are there and all of us being a resource to one another when each of us have these challenges in our lives. I love that. I think it's just so it's so uplifting to hear employees supporting other employees. And you're right, it doesn't have to be a supervisor or a manager. That peer-based support is just so, so impactful and so incredibly um, important. Uh, you sort of led right into this. Uh, you know, we talk about um, that mental health issues are a DEI concern. So, you know, how have you integrated diversity, equity, and inclusion insights into your HR practices at Care First, especially when it comes to regarding, you know, mental health support and awareness initiatives? Yeah. So we believe a, a diverse population creates a population where all employees feel value, right? So if you only have a certain population and then you have someone who may look or appear different, immediately you're going to feel a little, hmm, am I welcome here, right? So creating a diverse environment really, I think, breaks down some immediate barriers where things like you're the only one in the room or, you know, your voice isn't represented around you. So that's number one. Um I think the employee resource groups that I talked about, they're run by our diversity, equity, and inclusion office. So when I say run, meaning they provide the resources and the support, but these are really employee-led um, employee resource groups is number two. Um, I also think, you know, programming with the DEI office. So every year we have a week of equity uh, in action. And we bring in diverse speakers all the time. And I just had a meeting with our head of diversity, Tanya Odom, today, and she gave me a rundown of the different topics that we're going to talk about this year. And mental health and awareness is, and behavioral health awareness is one of our key topics this year. So our programming is also directed in this space and making sure we bring different voices um, into this space. And I think each, um, you know, I think there's an element of behavioral health and mental health awareness that's always woven into most of our programming that we do. Because we find that, you know, having like a really strong mental health awareness um, and really caring for the whole being it requires us to address so many aspects of a human being, right? It requires us to address financially what the financial needs are. It requires us to address things like um, depression, right? Um, healthy eating. Um, it requires us to address maybe safety in communities. And these are topics that we bring forth during this week of equity action. It just is a whole array of different topics each year. And I think it all, all of it is to create an environment where employees can see themselves, hear themselves, see that others are going through some similar challenges. Um, most of our speakers are extremely uplifting. And so it's just it makes you feel good that week. You really just got to come out of it feeling better that week. And uh, so this DEI and mental health support and awareness, they're so inter interlinked. It's, it's really great. That's wonderful. Um, and I, I completely agree. I think just inter integrating the conversation, uh, we, we talk about normalizing the conversation around mental health. And I think the more areas in the workplace that you can find to integrate that conversation into just the better your the well-being of your employees will be. Um, okay, so I've asked you, you know, to impart your wisdom upon us um, and all all of your learnings, Angela. I'm going to ask you, um, you know, probably the toughest one, which is what are some of the most impactful lessons that you've learned about HR leadership and employee development? I mean, particularly in the context of elevating conversations about mental health in the workplace, but just overall. I mean, I do consider you a transformational leader in this space, so. 
What should others know that you've learned along the way? Oh, oh gosh, a few things here. Um, Never judge a book by its cover, right? You may think people have everything together in their lives and they're just doing so well and just have the greatest job and the greatest family. And don't take that as, you know, at first face value all the time, right? Um, really get to know people, really ask how they're doing and listen to how they're doing. We had a senior leader here who spent over 30 years with the organization, top position in the organization. And when he retired, he sent a note back to the organization uh, expressing his gratitude, but also sharing some of the mental health challenges he had had in the years and how Care First um, had been a support for him. But we never knew. We never knew, right? And so when that letter came through, I asked him if we could share it with the organization, and we did. And I, I would say that was an eye that was an eye opener. I was so proud that he came forward and shared with us, and allowed us to share his story. And so um, that's one thing I don't take for granted what appears to be going well on the outside. I really do take time to listen. I also have learned that, you know, in order to be an effective leader, you really have to make sure you're not burnt out or overwhelmed. And so, you know, how in the airplane, you know, put your oxygen mask on first before you help others. I really take that to heart in my job. Um, we joked a little bit earlier, uh, you know, making sure uh, that you can't see what I'm wearing, right? I have my little sweatpants because I, I want to be ready to go for a walk. Sometimes I take my meetings and I talk and walk. Um, I really, I, I practice what I preach. I try to get up and I I have give gratitude in the morning. Uh, I, I spend a little time in the word and, and meditate and work out and I try to eat healthy and I try to get my sleep. And so that may mean saying no to certain things during the week that I just can't do and be ready to hear and support others throughout the week. So I do make sure my well is full. I do make sure that I um, practice what I preach. Uh, I do make sure I encourage our difference makers to use the resources that are available to them, which includes time off and vacation time. And I don't bother them. So those are a few things I've, I've learned. I've learned that, you know, you have to speak as a senior leader. I have three kids. People think I have it all together. No, I don't. You know, my siblings help me. Uh, my parents have helped me throughout the years. I've had to lean on a lot of people to do what I do. I can't do it all. I can't be a top executive and, and you know, adequately raise my kids alone. So I share those things, you know, like. No, my my family has helped me out tremendously so that people don't think that they, they have to do it all in order to succeed. So those are just a few things. Hopefully that'll help. Absolutely. I think that is uh, such an important message for so many to hear about um, leading by example and really openly sharing um, challenges that are going on in your own life or, you know, how you're navigating those, the support you receive from friends and family. Um, I know I try to be very honest with my team when I'm going to leave to go and, you know, go on a field trip for my daughter's school rather than, you know, just saying I'm working remotely. I try to be very honest about where I am and what I'm doing and give them the freedom to do the same in return. I think that's Oh, that's a, that's a great point. I make my calendar pretty public and I'll put on it getting hair done, right? So they know, <clears throat> hey, I got to get my hair done too. <laughs> it's self-care and it's important. It's putting that mask on first, right? On the airplane. Yes, you got to do it. Um, so you mentioned that this is, you know, that while you all have come a long way in providing mental health support or, or programs to your difference makers, that um, this is just the beginning and that there's more chapters for you to write. So are there any new uh, mental health initiatives or enhancements to existing programs that are planned for the near future at Care First that have you excited? Yeah, I think the enhancements are, are what we're doing. So we are doing uh, mental health awareness training. So we're offering more classes this year. Again, this is to how to recognize some symptoms of when, you know, 
our peers may need some mental health support. So that's the training. Uh, we've had over 500 employees take it to date, but we're going to continue to increase access there. Uh, we will uh, continue. I think I mentioned earlier, we're finding that some employees who are spending a lot of time on the phone helping our members, our customers, they may need a little bit more support to um, move away from their phone to maybe the, the customer phone to maybe have digital support uh, while they are uh, at work so that they can take a break, maybe, you know, engage with a um, a behavioral health professional in a text or over the phone. Uh, so we're just trying to meet employees where they are um, and just get real flexible about what that may mean based on what job that you're in. Um, you know, we continue to, the benefit equity survey, we, we continue to survey more and more people before we go into a new cycle of benefit design plans every year. And so we are looking at, you know, making sure that our paid time off, paid leave, which is a huge attractor for employees, they, they want to have a good paid leave policy, just making sure that continues to be ad adequate and in some cases uh, I would say better than standard. So we have caregiver leaves. We extended caregiver leaves to all employees. Um, and that's whether you're caring for a child or an elder parent or, you know, an adult child. Caregiver leave is something that uh, we used to do it where you had to take two weeks at a time. And people told us, our employees said, hey, sometimes I only need a week. I need a week to go relieve my parents' caregiver. So the fact that you're making me take two week chunks is just a little bit too much time away. So again, making sure there's flexibility in our policies. We'll continue to look at that. Yeah, absolutely. I think flexibility is so important these days as we evolve in our practices as employers and get better at what we're doing and take care of our employees. Um, flexibility, it's the key. Okay, Angela, I'm going to wrap it up here with what what message would you share with employers and employees about the importance of mental health resources and ending the stigma in the workplace? Uh, I, I think I will reiterate uh, a lot of positive change really starts at the top uh, by, you know, people leading. And so I encourage everyone to use the mental health resources available to them in their organization. Um, be open with their direct reports um, about what you're experiencing. Really share, listen, really learn how to listen, be flexible, uh, and just encourage employees to take care of themselves and be a resource for others. That's that's really it. I mean, that's been uh, successful for me. Um, you can't care for others until you care for yourself. And just really continue to encourage all of your employees to take a part of this uh, journey that we're on together. It starts at the top. But it has to be something that we all lean into, and it'll just help so many more uh, difference makers in my case. So, Well, thank you for leaning into this journey. We really appreciate your partnership, and thank you for taking the time to impart some of your um, wonderful knowledge on us today. It's been a wonderful time chatting with you. It's been great. I really appreciate um, the time that you've taken with me. Uh, Carrie, I, I just think it's been a fantastic partnership and I look forward to continuing it with you. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Angela. And thanks so much to the City Biz audience for uh, checking out our interview today. We appreciate you all. Thank you, City Biz.